Ideas presents the history and heroes of psychedelics. There are moments in time when two elements come together in a synergistic bond, creating an outcome greater than their individual parts. Like when macaroni met cheese, when pita butter met jam, when tacos met Tuesday. This is a little story about Alexander Sasa Shulgin, his wife Anne Shulgin, and how their synergy led to many extraordinary contributions to the world of psychopharmacology. You'll also find out how they freely share their discoveries for the greater good of psychonauts and psychedelic enthusiasts everywhere at the cost of their own peril. Before Sasha met Anne, he was a superstar research chemist at Dow Chemicals, where he created all kinds of compounds, including Zectran, a highly profitable, biodegradable pesticide. This discovery pretty much allowed him to be left alone to freely explore and experiment in his laboratory. However, as his research leaned further in the direction of psychopharmacology, they told him not to associate Dow Chemicals with any of his wacky hippie drug research because it would be bad for their brand. Would you like a trip with me, Inevitably, Shulgin and Dow Chemicals' relationship soured. In 1966, Alexander Sasha Shulgin left Dow Chemicals to pursue his education in neurology at the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine. Dow Chemicals went on to create napalm and Agent Orange to kill innocent Vietnamese civilians and destroy their agriculture, leaving a future generation with crippling birth defects. They even poisoned lands and rivers in the United States too. Dow Chemicals galvanized their outstanding brand reputation by losing a number of lawsuits for manufacturing leaky breast implants, tax evasion, and price fixing. In his home lab, where he happily spent the majority of his career creating new psychedelic analogs and publishing his findings, Sasha's expertise was sought after by the Drug Enforcement Agency. In return, the DEA gave him his coveted license to freely research and synthesize Schedule I psychoactive compounds to his heart's content. Aw, lucky! So what does a brilliant chemist with a passion for psychedelics do with that kind of freedom? Well, produce over 230 psychoactive compounds in his home laboratory, for starters. The most famous compound that he's known for is one he didn't even discover. MDMA, also known as ecstasy or molly, was discovered back in 1912 by Merck Pharmaceuticals. Sasha developed a new, easier way to synthesize MDMA, then introduced it to his friend, Leo Zeff, an American psychotherapist who went on to pioneer its use in psychotherapy. And Shogun contributed to Leo Zeff's book, the Secret Chief Reveal, a groundbreaking publication on the use of MDMA in psychotherapy. Okay, before we fall down another rabbit hole, let's talk about Anne. Before Anne met Sasha, she studied art and was an artist. When she met Sasha, she worked as a medical transcriber. This occurred around the time MDMA was first being used in Leo Zev's psychotherapy. She set up her own therapeutic practice using MDMA and 2CB, which was one of many phenethylamines Alexander Sasha Shulgin discovered in his laboratory. In 1990, the sum greater than their individual parts occurred when Sasha and Anne Shulgin co-authored the cosmic shifting book Pekel, A Chemical Love Story, Phenethylamines I Have Known and Loved. This book boldly describes the effects, dosage, and potential use of each of the many phenethylamines, including how to make them. That's right, there are detailed recipes on how to create MDMA, mescaline, and 2CB. Yeah, good luck with that, Copernicus. Unfortunately, this book was found in every illegal lab busted across the United States by the same DEA that gave Sasha his Schedule 1 clearance, which led to his own lab being raided by the drug task force, his chemicals seized, and losing his precious license. Did this deter Sasha and Anne? Nope. If they continued to co-author their follow-up book, TCAL, the continuation, Tryptamines I Have Known and Loved. In a similar format as PCAL, TCAL focused on tryptamines such as DMT, psilocybin, and ibogaine. As for the DEA, they continued to spend their bloated budget of billions of dollars putting mostly addicts and black folks into a for-profit prison system while making no significant dent in their continuous losing war on drugs. Well... I hope this episode was both informative and enlightening. There is so much more I could have included in the story of Alexander Sasha Shulgin and his muse, Anne Shulgin, but who has the attention span for that? 
So until then, remember to respect the medicine.